all types of different type of metals uh, we can use with this technology to make some really complicated shapes. We're here at Laser Cutter Manufacturer, but we've got uh, a branded Prima Power powder bed fusion 3D printer behind us. You guys make laser cutters. What are you doing making 3D printers? So basically, this is the next step on. We make laser machines, so why not go into additive, which uses laser? Uh, we've got two technologies, so the machine standing behind us is a powder bed fusion machine, so we're using a bed of powder and fusing together the um, powder of material to create a shape and then putting layers over the top of that until we build the models. And those are all different kinds of materials? Absolutely, all types of different type of metals uh, we can use with this technology to make some really complicated shapes. We also have direct energy deposition machines, which is a head that we put on onto our 3D lasers for usually repairing large volume parts that are, have cost an awful lot to manufacture and we need to put another layer on and maybe machine it back or change a feature. So those might be like a big aero part or a nuclear part or energy part that are high value and you don't have to make a new one. Of course, that's exactly what it is. So with the DED, we're actually using the same laser technology that we have on the 3D lasers, and we're firing the powder at the focal point of the laser on the surface of the material. So rather than firing building. gas to take material away, you're adding powder to put material to on. put material on. Exactly. Simple as that. It's simple as that, yeah. Okay. So if, what would your advice be to uh, a machine shop in the UK that think they might need some kind of powder bed fusion system, but what exact applications would they benefit from? You're going to need an application that's got a very, very high level of complexity where you want to keep your waste to your material waste and your machining times to a minimum. You really don't want to have a very high volume output because it's not a particularly fast process, although that is changing as time goes on. This machine has a, a sibling machine with two lasers, obviously that speeds up the process time. Complexity, R&D, that's really where it benefits. And as I say, you have a range of materials that you can use. So that is not a limiting factor anymore. It's basically the size of the piece and the complexity. So you're not limited by the tensile strength of the material, by the homogeneity of the, material, the resulting part, those uh, the, the part uh, strength is absolutely bob on, same as if it was machined, or better. Yeah, or better, yeah, because what we can actually do now is not put material where it doesn't need to be. We don't need to use a solid billet because there's no other way of making it. We can put a complex structure inside a part, gives you the same properties in terms of the strength, but takes away all of the weight, and from the point of view of the material utilisation, you're only using material where it needs to be. So to show a few examples, Barry, of what you can make on these, on these machines, first of all, we've got this thing. I mean, it, that yep. looks like an alien spaceship. That is a typical sort of aerospace type part where we've got a very, very complicated geometry, and using circular economy, you know, we're not using any more material than we need to, what we've got here is on the face that looks like a quite complicated part could be done on a machine apart from these structures here but you can just see through there there's a lattice work inside this is actually a framework inside the outer skin that you would never be able to do on a machine there's no center. way you can machine that absolutely not and then these pe these pieces here are actual tubes so again unless you're going to put a piece of uh, multiple pieces of bent tube in there they're a very thin diameter which would be very difficult to do you couldn't do that either. That would be have to made out of multiple parts and in a big assembly. Yes, yeah. Um, this is all done in one go. So that's a great example of a powder bed fusion part. Very, very complicated piece uh, made in one process. Which thankfully there's not many parts like this that you have to machine. But if there were, and hopefully in the future people will start thinking about designing parts, yep. one piece complete, because you can do amazing stuff like this. Yes, okay, yeah. moving on, we're talking, you're talking about um, repair and DED. Yes. Now you've yep. got, a, you've got, we've got a part here. Could we've got a fantastic what, part here. Can you where show me what these bits are? Basically, this would be a sort of typical piece that has come out of an aerospace, uh, like a, a turbine engine or something like that. Um, obviously, over time, that may well get broken, it get damaged yeah, it or worn. Chips out of, the, chips out out of, of it, yeah. When you're using a DED process, you don't need to build the whole part again. You're actually recycling the bit that may be broken. And as you can see there with the dark pieces on it, what's actually happening is we're adding layers of metal powder, fusing them back together. It's the same material as it would be that the part was made out of in the first place. And yes, we've repaired a part without needing to scrap it or a very expensive machining post. And how much would it cost to make a new part of this versus Oh, there's repairing. a huge what, difference, what a huge difference. Would, parts would like be? that can cost, depending on the size of them, can cost tens of thousands of pounds to make. Something like that on a machine, once it's set up, you're just talking about the process time itself and the cost of the powder, which in this case is a fraction of what the original parent material would have been. And even then, you're just talking about, even with material costs going up nowadays, you're talking yeah. about the blank for that would already be huge really expensive. Cost. Yes. Forgetting yeah. about the time taken to machine a brand new yeah. piece. Yeah. And then if we move on, we can see another 
a single turbine blade this time. Yes, yeah, and again, you can just see from the black part there, that is where it has been re uh, added to uh, using the A additive process. Now, again, the other thing is with the DED process is this is an add-on that goes onto our 3D lasers. So we already have the 3D laser technology. We've already got the machines. All we're doing is adding the heads onto our 3D machines. So they go onto our Laserdyne Aerospace products, and they can also go or even on the very, very big machine, the two meter by four meter uh, 3D laser that we manufacture for laser cutting. And you could, you could fit some massive parts Absolutely, in yeah. And if you think about in the uh, big industries where we're doing press tools or we're nucleus or vessels, aerospace components, very, very high value components, repairing them is vastly cheaper than actually remachining them or remaking them. And this is one big benefit that we have got by having this technology available to us, even in the industry that we're in.